morning, everyone. Um, thank you very much for inviting me to speak here today. Um, it's a great pleasure. Um, I'm here as a kind of semi-outsider of RE in a way. Um, I did used to teach RE quite a while ago. Um, but my main subject was sociology when I was teaching, and that's more what I've, I've been working with since. Um, however, last couple of years ago, I was involved in a research project called RE for Real, which, um, along with um, Adam Dinham, who's based at Goldsmiths, and that, that project explored stakeholders' views on what they thought should be the purpose of RE in schools um, and how it should be structured. So, um, and the, the, the kind of emphasis, the driver for that really was the fact that we thought there was a, there was a mid 20th century settlement um, in a, for RE in schools um, that didn't fit the 21st century reality. Um, so I'd like to spend my time today talking a little bit about some of the key recommendations of that research and how and why I think they're important. Um, just to give you a bit of background on the project itself, very briefly, um, the project asked teachers, students, parents and employers um, what they think, how the how and what they thought should be taught um, in, about religion and belief in schools. And the intention was to put those findings from schools, families, workplaces into dialogue with those who construct um, the future of learning in, around uh, religion and belief. Um, I'm not going to go into the findings or anything today because you can have a look by all means the reports available, uh, publicly available. Um, but I did want to talk, like I said, about a couple of the recommendations. Um, one of those was that a national panel should be set up to review the future of RE, which we obviously have with the Commission for RE. Um, and that that panel should, be, should make recommendations about the, about the purpose, the content and the structure of learning in RE. Um, a main recommendation was that there should be a national framework for RE and one that's applicable to <coughs> all schools, um, state and independent, and <coughs> faith schools. Um, yeah, there's the, the commission for RE at the moment, I know, um, obviously I'm not going to say much about that, I'll leave that to, to Alan and others <coughs> who are involved. Um, the, the idea of an entitlement or a, that they're working on, um, an, a framework of some sort, I think is, is very important, but I think it is important that it's that and not a curriculum, um, that it outlines um, the learning goals and objectives and suggested content. But I think it's important that there is a balance there between maintaining national coherence and um, consistency of quality across schools, but that there's a balance with school level flexibility as well. Um, the, yeah, one, one of the obviously there's, there's a need for a change in legislation I think to support that um, but there's also the bit that I'm really interested in um, is the ongoing debate itself around the aims and purposes of RE and I think that does need further thought and it needs further thought in the broader context of learning about religion and belief in schools so not just necessarily within RE um, it's widely recognised that RE, do, RE can't deliver all the aims and purposes that are variously ascribed to it and have been over time. Um, and I think that a review process needs to put more thought into which of those aims are specific to RE and which ones might be better suited to other subjects or, um, whole school, or really whole school concerns. <coughs> And one of the major recommendations from our report was that um, there should be consideration to marking out the boundary between the academic study of religion and belief and other religion and belief learning that might be associated with citizenship or SMSE, for example. Um, that may be particularly relevant to secondary, um, perhaps, but I think there are also issues there for, throughout, throughout the stages. Um, and I think, I mean, that's why I think a review process needs to be broad, needs to be very broad. Um, it needs to look at, like I said, religion and learning about religion and belief in general terms um, and looking at those overlapping aims um, between RE and other subject areas. Um, citizenship, for example, religion and belief is a huge, a really important part of citizenship. Um, and the two have had a quite complicated relationship, the two subjects, over the years. Um, but certainly the, the more maximal sort of um, notions of citizenship, um, like those you find in intercultural education, and um, recognise the importance of, of that relationship and the importance of knowledge and understanding about religion and belief as a key dimension of, of global citizenship. 
Um, in, in 2008, the um, Council of Europe made a set of recommendations um, to member states on the religion and belief dimension of intercultural education. Um, and that's been since translated into, into a roadmap in um, Robert Jackson's report signposts. Um, but not, I don't think, sufficiently taken up in citizenship, um, certainly not in the guidance. Um, it is a hugely important part, I think, of learning about religion and belief, and it's also a key driver for that learning in a lot of schools. Um, but it's often left to RE, and maybe that's fine. You know, maybe RE is a, is a good place for some of it. Certainly, you know, many RE teachers would be maybe best qualified to facilitate that, that kind of learning. Um, but I think this needs thorough consideration, not only by the RE community, but also by, with those with an influence over citizenship in schools. So citizenship, I think, needs review too, is what I'm saying. Um, another area of overlap, I think, needs a little more consideration is that of the, the idea of personal development in RE. Um, so this tension between your more, more kind of intrinsic and instrumental aims in RE is, is, is you know, it's, it has a long history. Um, and you see it expressed in the, the two learning objectives in RE, so learning about religion and learning from religion. Um, and this was a tension that was expressed in the research that we carried out in the schools, um, more explicitly by teachers themselves, but uh, implicitly as well um, by, by the range of respondents. Um, just to say, I, I do think that the main aim of um, RE should be the academic study of religion and belief, um, which would draw, draw on a range of disciplines, so interdisciplinary, um, drawing on sociology, theology, history, for example. Um, I think such a focus would raise the status of RE, um, it would make assessment easier, um, it makes it easier to identify progression, but I, I do think we need to exercise caution and not rush to adopt a, a narrow knowledge focused um, justification for the subject. Um, obviously we work in a, a knowledge based curriculum, um, but I think we need to be careful not to rush into a to fit that accountability-focused framework and ex at the expense of excluding other key learning object, key dimensions of learning. Um, in, I'm going to give you a plug here, Mark. In Mark Chater's and uh, Mike Castelli's new book, which we need to talk about RE, which is great, have a read. Um, Peter Schreiner in there, um, in a chapter he wrote, he, he, he argues that the knowledge economy and its focus on commodification has left little space for RE in the curriculum. Um, which su and suggests that therefore that the raison d'etre for RE lies in pupils' personal development. He argues that a new, more energetic position for RE um, depends on an, a more human-centred approach to, for education. And I do think we need a more human-centred approach to education, and RE can be part of that. But I, I don't think personal development and identity formation should be the main purpose of RE. That said, I do think the personal development element needs careful, careful handling and for two, two key reasons. <laughs> Firstly, um, our research showed that in RE, the RE space in schools has been occupied with a lot of whole school concerns, such as moral and spiritual development, and this was seen as pro problematic. Um, but it also showed that if it wasn't for the RE space, some of this wouldn't happen at all. Students particularly said it was the only place in the curriculum or in school that they got to express their own ideas, to think about their position in the world and where they stand, and so on. Um, so while I don't necessarily think RE should be or should be the main place for this, a, a future model needs to think about where that goes. Um, so back to the idea of a border review, really. Um, so let's throw PSHE in there as well. A review of that as well. <laughs> um, the second reason I think we need to exercise caution in sidelining personal development, it, and this relates to my understanding of religious literacy. Um, understanding of religion and belief and positive engagement with religion and belief diversity demands a level of personal reflection, I think. Um, and this is certainly promoted in constructivist approaches to RE, particularly in um, interpretive approach. Um, and I think that a, posit you know, a positive understanding and engagement with religion and belief diversity 
needs students to question their own assumptions around religion, around non-religion, religions and worldviews. Um, so while I do agree that there's a need for a clear expression of the knowledge basis for RE, I, don't, I think we need to be careful that this is not too narrow. Um, before I finish, I just want to say... You've got another four minutes. Oh, okay. Yes. I just, thank you. I just want to say a little something about content. Um, and again, this again relates to my understanding of religious literacy. Um, our report recommended that um, the content should reflect the real religious landscape. So as it's revealed in um, contemporary research around sociology of religion, for example. Um, the, that real religion landscape, real, sorry, real religious landscape, religion and belief landscape, I should say, is, is dynamic and it's, it's changing and RE does need to reflect that. And um, I welcome the focus in the, the Big Ideas um, report on, on continuity, diversity and change. I think that's hugely important. Um, and it also needs to reflect the broad trends, that there is more believing without belonging. There, is, there are many more ways of non-believing um, and we're in a context which is Christian, it's plural, it's secular, all at the same time. And that, I think that needs to be reflected. Um, our particular, particular recommendations that came out of the research I was involved in were that students should study a broad range of religions, beliefs and non-religion, that they should explore religion and belief as, a, as categories, um, they should explore the changing landscape, as I've said, and its impacts, the impacts of that on contemporary society, they, there should be a focus on contemporary issues and the role um, of religion and belief in current affairs and in controversies, and how, so they're, they're how religion, history, culture all relate to one another. There should be a focus on the relevance of religion and belief for workplaces in working life, and that's something that's not often talked about, but something that certainly came out of our research. Um, and an exploration of religion and belief as, as identity, as well as tradition. And I think the focus on category, or the category of religion or belief, is, is a good place to start. And I think it's the, the thread, really, that joins those together. Um, a focus on category allows the exploration of religion and belief for the individual, what it means to the individual, what it means to communities, and to wider society. Um, and in looking, I think, at religion and belief as categories, students necessarily have to critique not only the content, but also their, their own response to it. So going back to... I was saying previously. Um, and for me, this, this is really what li religious literacy is about for me. It's, it's bringing together the study of religion and belief as categories, students' own dispositions to it, as well as the knowledge and skills they can gain from that, which I think is a lot to ask of RE, of one subject, particularly in the time it has in the curriculum, um, which is why I think consideration needs to be, um, there needs to be consideration around you know, if RE can do that all, and if not, where else some of, where else in school some of it might be perhaps better suited. And I'll stop there. Thank you, Thank you very so much indeed. Thank you. And then... Um, there will be the opportunity for questions later after all four have spoken to the boss. Um, I would try and give you a, a five minute, one minute. Thanks. Thanks. Um, the next